Welcome to the WRAL Daily Download. I'm your host, Ali Ingersoll. A community is in mourning following the sudden death of a deputy. This week, hundreds of people gathered in Dunn to say goodbye to Deputy Sheriff Christopher Johnson. My colleague Chelsea Donovan joins me today to talk about the tribute and the car crash that claimed his life. Hey, Chelsea, thanks so much for being here today to talk about this. Thank you. So can you share some of what was said at this funer- funeral, talking about who exactly he was as a person? Yeah, so obviously there was law enforcement from not only our state but beyond uh, that came and gathered today to honor uh, Deputy Chris Johnson. And notably, as you would imagine, um, two of the sheriffs that he had worked for uh, in his recent career, which would be Harnett County over the last 16 months and um, Sampson County over the past 16 years. Obviously, the sheriffs there, um, they spoke about Chris not only for his you know dedicated story, storied career in law enforcement, um, but also that he was, you know, very dedicated to his, his family life, to his church, you know, as well as the middle school in which he was um, an SRO. Yeah. So talking about that, you just talked a little about his career, but can you just expand more about his career? I Having a job as an SRO, he really made a lot of contact with a lot of kids. Uh, did anyone from the school come out today or say anything? Definitely a lot of members um, from the Harnett County Schools community as well as Highland Middle School. There wasn't anybody that spoke on their behalf, but as you mentioned, um, you know, a quarter century in law enforcement it is quite a career. He grew up in the Sampson County area, um, so he spent time uh, nine years as a law enforcement officer with the Dunn Police Department, 16 with the Sampson County Sheriff's Office, and then most recently had he had moved over to Harnett County, uh, where he was a school resource officer in a middle school there. And outside of being a member of law enforcement, he was a father, right? You said he was a member of a church, a pretty big active member of a church. What exactly was his family life like, and what did you learn about that uh, during the funeral? So he and his wife grew up in this area, um, and, you know, obviously it was pretty heartbreaking to see, you know, his wife, Melanie, and their four children. He's got four kids ranging in age from 11 to 25 um, that were all in attendance. And as you can imagine, um, just really a heartbreaking scene to see them so uh, torn up as they were watching this memorial service unfold. And both sheriffs made that, you know, that uh, comment as to how he, you know, he always wanted to make sure that after his career in law enforcement, he could get home and be a stay-at-home dad because he wanted to make sure that he could go to all of his children's events and sporting events and things of that nature. So that was definitely heartbreaking to hear that he had those plans in the future. Yeah, you definitely sometimes I think when you are thinking about someone and honoring them in this way, you think about their career. And we talk so much about their career, but really it is people are shaped by who they are outside of what they do, especially in a career like law enforcement. Um, So this crash, very sudden, we covered it in depth when it first happened. And looking at Officer Down, a website that tracks information related to fallen law enforcement officers, car crashes are one of the most common line of duty deaths, consistently in the top three over the last several years. So that's how Deputy Johnson died, as we know. Can you talk about the scenario and the crash and what we know about it? Yeah, so he was in his marked, um, you know, deputy vehicle leaving Highland Middle School. This was around 3 p.m. a week ago, Tuesday. Um, and this was a three-car collision where we know, according to the Highway Patrol, um, Deputy Johnson crossed the center line in his Dodge Charger, and then he hit a tractor trailer on Derrick Road, which is near Highway 210 in Harnett County. So after that crash, um, his car rotated several times in the roadway and, and, and not only struck the tractor trailer, but another vehicle. And so the driver and the passenger of that car um, were taken to a local hospital to be treated for minor injuries. And of course, Johnson um, died at the scene. So it was really just a, a horrible incident that shut down that roadway for, for quite some time. Um, and some of these tributes that police officers pay, can you talk a little about them? I know that Outside of the funeral, there were some other events that took place to honor him, right? So there was a processional last week in which dozens of law enforcement officers uh, were able to pay tribute to him through the streets of downtown Clinton, um, where he was taken to a funeral home where he was before the service today. And that was really a touching uh, tribute to him where... um, on Highway 421 in Sampson County, uh, they had a, a very large, you know, billowing American flag, which is very customary when you honor law enforcement. 
happen in these types of situations. But it was really nice to see just strangers and community members pausing in their day uh, last Thursday just to take a few minutes to honor him for his dedication to, you know, not only law enforcement, but his community, his church, and of course the school in which he recently worked. I'm pausing again for that funeral, and we're going to take a break as well. Welcome back. Now, there were law enforcement members from all over at this funeral, as you said, Chelsea. Can you talk about that bond, especially when it comes to a profession like this? Yeah, these were just not law enforcement officers that were local to Harnett and Sampson County. We saw law enforcement officers, obviously, from across state lines. I I was looking at some vehicles um, from South Carolina and Virginia today. Um, And, you know, just like military service, this really is a, a brotherhood. Um, you know, these, these folks train together, they work together, they spend so much of their lives together outside of their family life that, you know, it's just really touching to see so many law enforcement officers, you know, that may not have been with him at the sheriff's office or maybe at the Dunn Police Department, but, you know, they all, all of them, you know, as you can imagine, are our brotherhood. So it was really touching to see uh, these law enforcement officers that likely a lot of them didn't even know Deputy Johnson Um, and hearing from his coworkers, how exactly does a department move forward from something so sudden, a crash that claimed one of their own's lives? Yeah, so, you know, as, you, as I mentioned earlier, both of the sheriffs that he just recently worked with, um, as you can imagine, are just pretty shaken up to know that this happened to one of their own who they spent day in and day out with. And, of course, um, just like anything that would happen, uh, there's great counselors that are available We should mention not only within these departments in which he worked and he really bonded with his other fellow law enforcement officers, but also we understand that they're in the school system in which he was an SRO and his daughter's um, school, one of his daughter's schools at Midway High School. So, of course, obviously, there is a lot of support in place and resources because, you know, this is one of those um, tragedies that will stick with these uh, law enforcement officers for quite some time. Yeah, and those kids. I didn't even think about that when you were talking about the grief counselors there. That's something that just extends beyond the people in the department. Um, So I feel like being at a funeral, even for someone you don't know, it can become very emotional. Is there any one moment that stands out to you or was anything said or done today that really made you pause? I think all of it is highly emotional. I think hearing from both the sheriffs who are uh, very stoic and keep things close to the best customarily and, and, you know, um, to see them emotional inside of the church is obviously very striking because you you don't normally see them in that regard. And and some of the personal stories that that they told that Chris would do, you know, even off duty when he, you know, he didn't have the badge on, he wasn't in a patrol car, but some of the things that he would do just as a good Samaritan and as a good citizen um, it was really touching to hear just sort of the kindness that, you know, they were saying he's just, just such a big, has such a big stature, but he's got this heart of gold, heart of gold even, you know, calling him a gentle giant, uh, just because of some of the things that he did when he was just off the clock. So those were touching moments to hear. Well, thank you, Chelsea, for joining me, and thank you for listening to the WRAL Daily Download. Another great way to get WRAL news is the Morning Briefing Newsletter. It's a daily email sent to your inbox every morning waiting for you with local news, events, and headlines to get you ready to start your day. You can sign up at WRAL.com slash newsletter. Thanks for listening.